Rogers Center it is 27 degrees on this gorgeous afternoon. The roof is wide open here at Rogers Center. All right, Dickey set to go to the mound to take on the Minnesota Twins, and Dickey's been red hot. He's won his last three decisions over a span of four starts. Now it's time to take a look at the Twins lineup. They were shut out on seven hits last night. The lineups are brought to you by Quaker Steak. Real, durable oil. Top of the order, Brian Dozier, the second baseman, had a couple of hits in last night's game. He was two for four, and Dozier has been a little spark plug at the top of the order. He's got a five-game hit streak, seven for 21 during that hit streak. Right behind him, the veteran, 39-year-old Jamie Carroll gets a start at third base. He is three for eight against R.A. Dickey, the knuckleballer, so Carroll gets the start here this afternoon. Bauer and Morneau, middle of the order. Osvaldo Arcia, a very good-looking rookie, is in left field. They're set to take on the knuckleballer, R.A. Dickey. Who has won his last two starts to even his record at 8-8. Eight and eight. His knuckleball is dancing again. I think that's giving him better command. He has walked just one in each of his last two games. For his career versus Minnesota Twins, seven games, three starts, but he hasn't faced the Twins since 2008, but throwing much better now. That ERA keeps going lower and lower for Dickey. Dickey's knuckleball has been much more consistent. He can throw strikes with it, as Pat mentioned. Not many walks lately. The outfield defense, Davis, Rasmus, and Bautista. Left, center, and right. On the infield, Meiser Asturias makes his 26th start at third base. Reyes and Kawasaki up the middle. Good to see Edwin Encarnacion back at first, and Josh Tolley making his eighth start of the season, calling the pitches for R.A. Dickey. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Edwin over there at first base. His first start at first since June the 27th. That's when the Blue Jays were in Boston. The wrist and the hamstring feeling much better for Edwin. R.A. Dickey pitched for the Minnesota Twins in 2009. He made 35 appearances, made one start. So he goes against his former team this afternoon. First pitch of the ball game is in there. This is his last warm-up toss, and that's a perfect knuckleball. Very few revolutions as it takes its way to the plate. Dozier is behind quickly, 0-2. Yeah, hey, you don't want that tumbling action on that knuckleball where it spins and rolls over. That's where you get no movement on it. You want no rotation. And he's been doing that his last couple of starts. There's a line drive base hit into right. Bautista comes up throwing and not in time. And Carnacion was right on time. He knew what Bautista was thinking. Edwin went right to the bag, and Bautista made a strong throw to first. You know who else who knew what he was doing was the batter. A line drive into right field, and Dozier sees that Bautista's coming hard. Look at him busted out of the box, saying, you aren't taking a hit away from me, and he just beats the throw from Bautista in the outfield. It's a heads-up play from Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion. Jamie Carroll starting at third base this afternoon. <laughs> Takes a first pitch strike. Carroll is 39 years old. Made his debut with the Montreal Expos in 2002. He's had a nice career. This is his 12th season in the major leagues. Hey. Dozier has seven steals, but he's been caught six times. And Dickey's very quick to first. Yeah, he's very quick to home also. Very tough to run on Dickey, even though he throws that knuckleball. Oh. Well, the one thing that we have seen from R.A. Dickey over his last several starts is the ability to throw strikes. Dramatically improved from early in the season, and that has really helped him. It's perfect already today. Perfect five for five. Right three, and Jimmy Carroll didn't like it, thought it was upstairs, but Dickey has his first strike out of the afternoon. Good sign. Let's take a look at the scouting report brought to you by TD Bank, proud sponsor of your Toronto Blue Jays. It's a long one, a long scouting report. Knuckleball fastball, that's what you're going to get. In June, it's the miles per hour it has gone up for R.A. Dickey. In June, last start. And the knuckleball, a couple of miles per hour. I see the biggest difference in his fastball. He touched 90, or excuse me, 83 with his fastball in his last start. That's a big pitch for him. Joe Maurer back behind the plate as the catcher in today's game. 
Maurer was the DH finished up with a single in four at bats last night that kept his road hitting streak alive. It's now eight straight on the road. Dozier with the lead at first he's not running. Josh Tolley's done a great job of handling R.A. Dickey's knuckleball. Of course, they were together last year with the Mets. Says he always just tries to stay as relaxed as possible and let that knuckleball come to him. It's kind of contradictory because you know it's always going to be a challenge, but you got to stay relaxed. Yeah, I like his setup behind the plate right there. Usually you want to see catchers give a target and get down low. He just has to sit in the middle of the plate in a nice relaxed feeling with his wrist. Just turns that glove over like he's playing catch. There's a fly ball into shallow center. Rasmus on the run. He'll get there. Dozier's hung up. They got a shot at first. And he is. Nobody's going to make the call. Second base umpire made the call. Dan Iasonia. The second base umpire finally made the call, and he calls a double play. First base umpire Paul Emble, home plate umpire Brian Knight, and watch the catch by Rasmus Dozier. I don't know what he was thinking because this is an easy play for Rasmus, and he is out. Good selling job by Encarnacion. The double play ends the inning. Garden Hire arguing with the umps, and we come back. Reyes Bautista Encarnacion. Has to get out there because he's not sure where the ball is going to fall in. But he breaks, and then that last one right there, I think, was the one that did him in. You go about halfway, anticipating the ball down. You see him start to catch the ball, but that was a good play by Encarnacion on the back end. Take a look at the Blue Jays lineup. They had four runs on ten hits in last night's game. They Bautista with the home run, and he has been red hot in his last eight games. 483 with four homers and eight RBIs, and then Adam Limp. His career numbers against Minnesota are very strong. Four homers and 15 RBIs and a 331 batting average. Former Met Mike Pelfrey on the mound for his 15th start of the season for the Twins. He signed a one-year contract with Minnesota back in December, trying to stabilize that starting rotation for the Twins. Belfry was the number one pick, ninth overall in the 2005 June draft. First pitch from Pelfrey is in there. And he gets to face his former teammates. Both together with the Mets, of course. Belfry had his best season in 2010. He was 15 and 9. Reyes hits it on the ground. Eduardo Escobar throws it in the dirt, and Morneau can't dig it up. Morneau held his ground. He kept his foot on the bag, tried to hold on to that low throw, but it bounced out of his glove, and Reyes is aboard. That throw really ate up Morneau at first base. Uh, he slaps at it. Just doesn't get a lot going over to first base, and you can see Morneau trying to hold his ground with his right foot. It ate him up. The in-between up tries to squeeze it against his chest. Can't come up with it. Good start for the Jays. Let's see. Fourth air for 
Escobar at shortstop. He's a utility player that plays all around the infield. Jose Bautista Reyes has a big lead at first. Reyes had his stolen base last night first as Pat mentioned since he's come off the disabled list. Jose Bautista had a big night at the play three for four. Drove in a pair and hit his 20th home run of the season. Boy, these two guys did all the damage last night. They knocked in all the runs for the Jays. We're on base a lot. Boy, defense really put Belfry in a jam early. Trying to get settled into this game. He gets a ground ball to the shortstop. Looks like a routine out. Now he's got to work out of the stretch. Reyes is picked off. Reyes had a big lead. Pelfrey has seen that lead in the past as they were both with the Mets, and he picks him off. Yeah, so he must have known something right there. Reyes almost had two feet on the carpet. Look at that. As soon as Pelfrey flinches, so does Jose Reyes, and the air goes for naught as he's picked off. Now both teams have lost a base runner in the first inning. Bautista with a 2 0 count. Taking all the way, wanted a good look at Pelfrey. There are only two Blue Jays in the lineup that have had at bats against Mike Pelfrey coming into this game Edwin Encarnacion and Meiser Asturias. Pelfrey, of course, was a hot topic with the Mets for a long time. They had high expectations for Pelfrey. You mentioned the one good year. I, I thought this guy was going to be a staple at the top of the rotation for the Mets, but some injuries and some inconsistencies have doomed him. This has popped up straight behind the screen and well out of play. He's a big guy. I mean, he looks like a starter when he's out on that mound. Belfry, 6'7, weighs 249. Came out of Wichita State. It's a great baseball program. Of course, Joe Carter played at Wichita mm -hmm. State. But you see him out, out there, big and strong. Reminds me a little bit of Jeff Neiman from the Tampa Bay Rays. Boy, if you were going to make a mold for a starting pitcher, you might start with Mike Belfer. Big, strong, great body, big shoulders. Look how wide his shoulders are right there. Yeah, the problem that he had when he went on the disabled list was a back problem. Bautista to jump back from that inside pitch. Belfry in college at Wichita State went 33 and 7. Pretty dominant then. And of course, you factor in his size, he profiles as the number one pick. Full count to Bautista. Hit into center field. Not that deep. Aaron Hicks comes in, makes the catch. There are two outs. Take a look at the defense for Minnesota. The outfield is the same as last night. Arcia hits and Parmerly from left to right. Different look on the infield. Jamie Carroll starts at third. Eduardo Escobar at short. Dozier and Morneau back in the lineup. And Malin is back behind the fight after serving as the DH last night. Yeah, a little bit of a change to get him the day game after a night game. He is my all star catcher. Good to see him in there this afternoon. It's a good reminder the all star selection show. Uh, be on the air tonight at 6.30 and you'll find out who made the all-star team. Two outs. Edwin Encarnacion has a home run against Pelfrey, but he's just one for nine. Edwin returned to the lineup last night against Kevin Correa. Then he stepped 0 for 3, hit into a double play. He also walked. I just like the idea that he is back on the field, Encarnacion, that he's healthy enough to start at first base. 
those hamstrings can be very tricky. Connor takes a two round walk. As Encarnacion makes his way to first base, let's take a look at the scattering report for the starter for the Minnesota Twins, Mike Pelfrey. You're going to get a lot of fastballs from him. And the batting average against 324. He's also got a little bit of a slider and a curveball. He'll split it up there every now and then also. But I think the fastball is a pitch that he has to center. And he has to be able to throw for strikes. Blue Jays can look for it early in the game as he establishes it. Pelfrey working out of the stretch. Lynn steps in, takes a pitch down in it. You know, the one thing that the Twins have really tried to get Pelfrey to do is speed it up a little bit. He's very deliberate out on that mound and takes his time. They've been wanting him to go a little bit quicker to get into a little bit more of a rhythm. Two and zero. Oh. Adam Lynn had a double last night. Came in his third at bat. Had a little bit of a rough stretch. That double snapped a streak of an 0 for 10. And he has rejoined the lineup. He came out of the lineup Sunday in Boston with a back problem. Three and zero. Oh. You let him hit here. Yes. You know, I, I know he's struggling a little bit, but you've got a pitcher on the mound who throws a lot of fastballs. We just saw that in his scouting report, and a guy who has been swinging and hopped that. If you feel comfortable enough, let's see if you can get the guy in from first base with one swing. Takes a strike. You know, if there was no outs or one out, I'd say no. But there's two outs. Adam Lind is hitting fourth for a reason. The drive in runs. Let him swing away. We saw Jim Leland do that throughout the entire four game series with the Tigers. He let his big slugger swing 3 and 0. Oh. 3 and 1, two outs. Now it's a full count. Some guys don't like to swing 3 and 0, oh, especially early in the game. They want to see a lot of pitches, they want to get an idea of what the pitcher's trying to do to them. That's the best time to swing, I think. Got a free shot. Justin Morneau has moved behind Incarnacion at first. Full count, two outs. Edmund will be off on the pitch. There he goes. Ball four. Back to back walks. They come with two outs. Twins have lost six straight. And you can see since. 21st of June, they're just three and 11. ERA almost six and a half, and the run differential is not good. They've stranded too many base runners because they haven't hit well in the clutch. Yeah, that uh, those two numbers, the ERA and run differential, are going to lead to that one loss record at the top right there. You have to be able to pitch it, and, and they know the Twins know that. They don't have the, the starting pitching like they had a couple of years ago when they were in the playoffs three or four straight years. They had to kind of put it together this winter. Kobe Rasmus takes the ball outside and Pelfrey's really struggling to throw strikes. Kobe hit a double last night. He also grounded out to second three times. Early opportunity for the Jays. Pelfrey gets the breaking ball over. Got to take advantage of his wildness. Jay's had a lot of runners on base in last night's game. Could have been a lot worse. They left eight on and just had two hits in eight at bats with runners in scoring position. Here's the one one pitch from Pelfrey. Way outside. Well, he just hasn't gotten into his rhythm, and you got to go back to that air by Eduardo Escobar first. Play of the inning. He booted it, made a bad throw to first, and that allowed Reyes to get on. And Belfry's been working out of the stretch ever since. Ever since. And now you've got to be careful right here. Two and one to a fastball hitter. 
Well, he's really running away from his delivery, and that ball is tailing ineffectively off the plate, just a little bit too quick with his front side. It's opening up too quickly, not allowing him to stay over the, his front side. Now you can dial it in right here for Colby Rasmus. This will be the 27th pitch of the inning. Three straight walks. All coming with two outs, and here comes the pitching coach, Rick Anderson. Isn't it amazing how one play can really create problems? And look back to that air by the shortstop. And yeah. Helfrey never really got into his delivery. You know, and he ended up picking them off and then getting Bautista flying out to center field. And then it looked like he was just trying to be so careful with Encarnacion trying to throw the perfect pitch to get out of the inning with nobody scoring. He's just come out of his delivery. The question now I think goes to Rajay Davis. He's walked three batters in a row. Do you stay aggressive up there at the plate or do you want to go ahead and see a couple of pitches? I think you hit on this first pitch as if it were a 2 0 count. Look for something that you want to hit. And if it's the pitch you're looking for, jump all over. But you really got to be selective. Yeah. yeah. You know what you have to do? You have to recognize the ball out of Pelfrey's hand very early. Don't just say, okay, fastball, I'm swinging. If he happens to spin one, and I don't think he will, if he happens to spin one, you're in swing mode. I think you just have to say, okay, I'm going to look for a certain pitch in a certain spot. If he throws it there, take a nice, easy swing. Rajay Davis with the bases loaded and two outs. Good idea. They're not going to get those borderline calls either from the umpire if you show early in the game that you can't throw a strike. Pelfrey has walked three with two outs in Canacion, Lind, and Rasmus. Right down the middle, he had a good cut. You know what you don't want to do, I think, as a hitter here is try and do too much. I think you just have to just concentrate on the baseball and just think about putting a good swing. If you have a lot of thoughts in your mind and you're thinking about base hits or I've got to do a double, I've got to do it, just keep it simple and just try and see the ball, put a good swing on it. Good things are going to happen for you. One ball, one strike. Pop back, Belfry is right back. In command of this attack. And, and remember who has the pressure on him to get you out. He's got to come to you. Rajay's approach, those first couple of swings have been okay. Belfry's season high in walks is four. He's walked three with two outs here in the first. Well, you're right. Davis just needs to come up with a base hit here. Ari Dickens throwing the ball so well of late. You would love to give him an early lead. Yeah. And he seems to settle in a little bit quicker when he has a lead. Two balls and two strikes. Bouncing ball right side. More no one after. Kelfrey gets there and. Rajay Davis is out. The Blue Jays strand the bases loaded. Belfry checking on Davis, make sure he's okay, but a golden opportunity down the drain in the first.
The new BlackBerry Z10 and Q10 built to keep you moving. Well, today it has to do with Justin Morneau and his on base plus his slugging average per month. It just keeps rising. Good month of June for Justin Morneau at 821 with the OPS. Runs batted in. He's just outside of the top 10 now in runs batted in. Some of that might have to do with the weather. In April, it was awful in Minnesota this year, trying to hit in all the snowstorms and all the problems that they had. But the weather's warmed up, and so is more known. Says he really feels good, especially the fact he's playing in the field. He is making his 73rd start at first base today. Ground ball. Kawasaki waits on it and double clutches and had a bad grip on the baseball, but he's able to throw out Morno. One down. So that'll bring the left field of the rookie, Osvaldo Arcia, to the plate. Arcia. Had a good night at the plate last night. Finished up two for four. A little bit of a free swinger. Just watching him yesterday and talking to some of the, the Twins people. So this will be interesting to see how he goes about the knuckleballer. I'm going to guess, but there probably wasn't too many knuckleball pitchers in the minor leagues for him to hone his craft about hitting the knuckleball. Boy, this is a good one right here. And watch how this dives right at the end. Less rotation. And it just messes up with your timing. RC does a pretty good job of waiting as long as possible. He's trying to make sure he doesn't get too anxious. He's only 22 years old. And you're right, he's probably getting his first look at a knuckleball. This is popped up on the infield. Is Storis in third makes the catch. Two outs. Let's check in with Jamie Kemp. who has got an update for us. Start to his season. Chris Davis, 85 RBIs as well. He's an All Star. Don't have to worry about that. We'll hear more about that All Star team at 6:30. But how about the Orioles last night? Mm. Jim Johnson, another blown save, his sixth of the season. Trevor Plouffe lifts it into center field. Rasmus goes all the way back to the warning track. Good inning for. Dickey just eight pitches. Meiser is Sturis. Josh Tolley and Kawasaki would be come back.
Jays on Sportsnet, brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the 2013 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 15 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Mike Pelfrey throws ball one to Meiser as Sturis as the Jays start things off in the bottom of the second. Scoreless ball game. Blue Jays had Mike Pelfrey on the ropes and he put himself there. Back to back to back, two out walks. 32 pitches in the first inning. He goes down, sits down. R.A. Dickey, boom, 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 one, two, three, and now Pelfrey's right back out there. That could be good for the Jays. Well, and you used to hear this all the time when you played, when pitcher had a long inning. Manager used to tell the hitters, hey, take a pitch or two now. we got to give this guy a chance to catch his breath. That wasn't the case. Minnesota went quickly. So now the Jays, I think, have to take advantage of that. Put something together here and keep him out there a little bit longer. Pretty hot day here at Rogers Center, 27 degrees at the start of this ball game. There's a base hit for his stress. Well, he has hit well against Pelfrey. He is now four for seven. Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, email ask the experts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware ask the experts segment later on in the game. Getting to be a little bit more like summer around here. Josh Tolley takes one up and away. There's Tolley and Pelfrey, too, were teammates with the Mets. Yeah, if there's anybody on the Blue Jays who knows anything about Mike Pelfrey, it's the guy standing at the plate right there. He caught him. Pitcher in the Mets organization, Pelfrey. So he's got a great scouting report. And you see him just go ahead and take that first pitch all the way. Didn't even offer at it. I always found it interesting to face a pitcher that I had caught in the past and Obviously, you know everything about them. You caught them. You talk to them. You know what their inner workings are like. And sometimes that can be too much information. Did you ever get into a situation where it's 2 no and you knew the guy wasn't going to throw a fastball? You say, okay, now I can look for a breaking ball or vice versa. You do it all the time, man. Dennis Leonard and Paul Spitter are two guys that. I really knew well, and I could pick up every pitch that Leonard threw, having caught him for From so long. Catching him, yeah. And you knew his tendencies and what he liked to do to certain right-handed batter. The bad news was I still couldn't hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Belfry has already picked off one base runner here. He got Jose Reyes in the first. Uh, he's thrown over a couple of times, anticipating that Blue Jays might play hit and run. That's not the time to do it right now. I don't think. At the bottom of the order, you've got a pitcher who is struggling with right. his control. You don't want to give him an out. Two and one to total. Fouls this one down the left side. That'll reach the seats. Plus the fact, Pelfrey's been so wild, you don't know if you're going to get a pitch close enough to yeah. put in play. That's what I mean about giving yourself an out. I mean, if he bounces one up there or throws one off the plate, you have to swing. Two balls, two strikes, as Sturis at first, and totally stays alive. Mauer couldn't hold on to that foul tip. Blue Jays shut out the Twins 4 0 last night. Mark Burley evened his record at 5 and 5, and his ERA is down to 450. A couple more like last night, and it'll be under 4 before you know it. He was good.
Well, Comfrey has thrown a lot of pitches. And he's put a lot of pressure on himself, and certainly three walks in the first inning elevated his pitch count to 32 in that first inning. 43 of them already. Not even throwing half of his pitches for strikes. Full count, nobody out. Is Sturris at first? There he goes. Totally drives it into center. Hicks is back. As Sturris went around the bag, he's going to have to hurry to get back. Dozer's throw in time. Is Sturris is double off on the fly ball to center. They didn't read it very well. Hicks now has eight outfield assists. He unloaded in a hurry, and Brian Dozier did a great job. The cutoff man turned and fired quickly. Yeah, both of them getting the ball out. If you're the runner at first base, a ball like this, you don't have to go around the bag right there. And I think that's what cost Meiser right there. He rounded the bag, and then the quick relay by Dozier ahead of him at first base for another double play. So two straight innings, they get the leadoff batter on and can't do anything with it. Kawasaki drops down a puck. They're going to let it roll, and it goes foul. The only hope they had was that ball would bounce into foul territory, and Kawasaki has to come back to the plate. Gets it up in the air with some backspin on it, so it's just going to deaden right there. Now they're praying that that ball goes foul, and it does. Kawasaki appeared to be asking the home plate umpire how far foul was it? <laughs> Just enough. Enough. <laughs> it was several feet fair when it hit the turf. Two outs. Budenoy Kawasaki had a big sacrifice bunt in the fourth inning in yesterday's game. It contributed to that three run inning. Again, it was the walks that got Kevin Correa in trouble. This has popped up down the left side. Arcia, the left fielder, makes the catch just inside the foul line. So we'll go to the third inning, still scoreless at Rogers Center. You can see the six starts in May. Had an ERA almost at six, and the hitters are hitting 270. It's been a totally different story. What's been different for Dick? Well, first of all, he wasn't very healthy in the whole month of May. Really struggled with that muscle problem in his back that crept up into his neck. But then once June came around, he started getting healthy. And you can see he's throwing more strikes, 17 strikes out of 18 total pitches. 
but he's also made a couple of adjustments by shortening his stride just a little bit. I think he has found his release point that really helps him keep that knuckleball online, throwing a lot of strikes. Chris Parmelay, the right fielder, takes the first pitch ball. Parmelay had a little flare base hit in the game last night. Here he's got a line drive. This could be extra bases. Bautista over to play it off the wall. Parmelay is headed for second, and he gets there standing up. His 11th double of the season. That's how the top of the third starts for Minnesota. One oh, another knuckleball. That one tumbles a little bit. You see it turning over a little bit. And Parmalee golfs it into the corner. Died a little bit once it hit the wall. Now Tista, no chance to get him. So a good start for the Twins. So Aaron hits the center fielder. Hicks is a switch hitter batting right handed against Dickey. It's not exceptional. We have seen Ben Zobris do this. Yeah, it's not uncommon for switchies to go up there right handed. Thought that maybe he would try and push a bunt the other way, but he's going to single instead. Parmley had to hold up to make sure that line drive wasn't caught. So it's back to back hits here in the third inning for Minnesota. Hicks picked the right side to hit from. A little bit tougher window for a knuckleballer to get it in there on a right hander. You can see he's thinking about hitting the ball up the middle or other way with that swing. After that leadoff double. Eduardo Escobar, he too is a switch hitter. He's going to bat right handed as well. I think he stuck a fastball in there. Get ahead. He'll do that every now and then. Batter thinking about that knuckleball and you cross him up and throw that 80 mile an hour heater. He just locks him up. Hicks has six steals so far this season. He's been caught twice. Escobar brings right through it. Well, this is where Tolley really has his hands full, obviously, trying to keep the ball in front of him. You want to catch the knuckleball if at all possible, but at the same time, you're thinking about blocking the ball. If it's in the dirt or off to the side, I mean, that's a real challenge of catching with runners at first and third. Back to Dickey. They're going to give up a runner here as Parker broke for home. Well, he is tagged out. Well, I don't know if I agree with Parmley breaking it home there. He's already at third base. There's nobody out in the inning. Why would you give up third? Well, you, you come off the. Any ground ball you're going to go home because the Blue Jays were playing too, except back to the mound right here. If Dickey catches the ball and turns and throws to second base, you could walk home. But you're right, Blue Jays do it perfectly. They execute it by getting the runner to run back to third base. It takes one throw, and Hicks can't go from first to third on that. You're right, just stay at third if, base. Yeah, if Parmalee just turns and goes back to third, Dickey's not going to make a play on it. He might try to go to second and keep double play. It. But with his good speed Hicks at first base and that replay by the time he turned around there was no play at second. His only play was it going to be at first base. So the twins should be hitting second and third and just one out. Yeah. So Dickey made a good play on it. Now he's checking with. The middle infield to make sure who has the coverage on. The comeback. So Hicks at second, Escobar at first. And now Kawasaki's going to break in behind the runner at second. Boy, there's been some 
poor base running in this ball game on both sides already. Three of them. Count three mistakes on the bases already. Well, it's all going to be for not as Tolley has that go off his glove, and now Twins end up with two runners in scoring position. So Tony got handcuffed with that one, and it was a wicked knuckleball. Yeah, I got a lot of movement. Look at this thing. Right under the glove. It's called a strike by the home plate umpire. Those are taking it all the way. It's a pass ball on Tony. There's a ground ball to Kawasaki. He'll go to first. Hicks comes in to score. And the Twins have taken a one nothing lead. So the Twins make out even after the base running mistake. It still works out for him after the pass ball. Dozer cashes him in with a, a ground down. All right, Dozer, dog, get him in. Have a baby. Uh, getting Rock Gardner acknowledging Dozier with a good at bat. Ground ball gets him an RBI. He's got 30 on the season. All right, Dickey helping out Tolly. You could hear him holler front once Tolly knocked that ball down. He wasn't sure where it was. Ball on a strike to the third baseman. Jamie Carroll. We mentioned made his debut with the Montreal Expos and then later went to Washington when that team was moved. He spent two seasons with the Dodgers, 10 and 11. Of course, he was with the Colorado Rockies and had that game winning sacrifice fly in that play in game. Game 163 back in 2007. And who were you telling me was the winning pitcher in that game? <laughs> who I forgot already. Ramon Ortiz. That Ramon Ortiz. That Ramon Ortiz. He was the winning pitcher. Colorado won it in the 13th. One and two, two outs. Well, totally, he flagged down a nasty one right there. That was headed to the backstop. 78 miles an hour. You got to just keep that ball in front of you any way you can with that runner at third base. Two balls, two strikes. The effects of runners moving up on a wild pitch or a pass ball. It has happened so many times this year to the Blue Jays. I mean, they'd be out of this inning. That ball to Kawasaki would have been a double play to get him out of the inning, but it scored a run instead. It's happened a lot. Jamie Carroll stays alive. He got a piece of that high knuckle. You know, you don't think much of it when it happens. Ah, it's just 90 feet. What's the big deal? Well, ultimately, it costs you a run. Yeah, it changes the entire complexion of the inning because Kawasaki, as you mentioned, like a Taylor made double play ball. That's why those coaches say that all the time. Keep the double play in order. See all those high knuckleballs, and Dickey does that by design. Once he gets to two strikes, he feels that throwing that knuckleball a little bit harder, it's more difficult for hitters to lay off that high one. Joe Maurer is on deck. This is popped up over near the seats. His store is over, but it's back out of play. Two pitch from Dickey. This is a foul ball just outside the bag at third. Jimmy Carroll putting up a nice at bat here. No strides. He's not over swinging. 
He's taking a nice short swing using his hands. He's putting up a good at bat. Yeah, you know you don't have to really wind up and try to catch up to a good fastball. You just try to stay back and be as quick as you can once you commit to your swing. Yeah, you'd be playing right in the Ari Dickey's hands if you do that. This is the 11th pitch of this at bat. That's a fair ball. Escobar comes in to score. Carroll is headed towards second, and he gets there with a two-out RBI double. Minnesota has taken a two-nothing lead. You, know, you could just see as that at bat started getting deeper and deeper that his timing was just a little bit better. His approach was outstanding. That's a veteran hitter right there. Watch the movement or lack of movement from Carroll. Nothing. Just the bat. It's the only thing that was moving. That's how you hit a knuckleball. Choked up just a little bit on, on the bat. Joe Maurer takes one inside. Carroll's fourth hit against R.A. Dickey. It's an RBI double. For Carroll, that's his fifth double of the season. Minnesota has a 2 0 lead. He's talking about this situation here at Rogers Center. There's another good knuckler and totally flagged it down. Bottom of the order doing the damage here in this inning. Chris Parmley hit a double to right. Hicks had a solid single to center. Could have been avoided if that pitch didn't get away and back to the backstop, taking away the double play. Now you got to face Mauer. There's another base hit into center. Jamie Carroll's coming around third. He's going to score. Joe Mauer picks up the RBI. For Mauer, that's just his 30th RBI of the season, but Minnesota has scored three here in the top of the third. And like Jamie Carroll, Joe Mauer, he has an idea at the plate. You're not going to go up there swinging against a different type of pitcher. You're not going to swing the same way. Hardly any movement again by Mauer. He's thinking about right over the shortstop's head. And that's exactly where he hits it. He's got one of the best swings in all of baseball. That's how you, you win three batting titles. Going the other way. We mentioned for Maurer, just his 30th RBI. Two outs. Justin Morneau grounded to second his first time up. Pulls it foul. Ball on a strike to the Twins first baseman. Boy knows the seventh twin to back this inning. Boy, this is really interesting, and the knuckleball is such a finicky pitch, boy. If you don't release it just perfectly, difficult to gauge what it's going to do. He was throwing two types of knuckleballs his last time out. The hard knuckleball, and then at times he was taking a lot off, really disrupting the timing of the batter. Haven't seen too many of those real slow knuckleballs so far today. Two and two. Dickey threw Trevor Plouffe a slow knuckleball to end the second inning. Hit a lazy fly ball into center. But it's interesting now you can feel the breeze starting to pick up with the roof open and sometimes if that breeze gets behind Dickens back that'll take a lot of the movement away from that knuckleball. 
There's a little pop up. Kawasaki makes it. That's Munoz retire, but the Twins have taken a 3 0 lead. Three runs on four hits. Blue Jays trail. For the Blue Jays. He's got some fans that are putting up a sign. We love George Poulos. But to be honest with you, those are his daughters, his <laughs> lovely daughters, Laney, Evie, and Nikki, who sang both national anthems yesterday. And I tell you what, there's proud Papa. He barely had a dry eye as he was watching his girls do a great job of singing both national anthems before the game yesterday. They were outstanding. And George made it out for that right at the last second. He's running out to see his daughters. That's great that he's able to share his baseball experience with his lovely daughters. Jose Reyes reached in the first inning on a throwing error about a shortstop. Then he was picked off by his former teammate Mike Pelfrey. Ball on a strike. Blue Jays trail by three. Belfry worked out of a bases loaded situation in the first. Reyes drives it down the right side, but it's foul. Jose Reyes and Jose Bautista had a big day. They teamed up to go six for eight in the ball game. Combined, they drove in four runs. They had four singles, a double, and a home run. Going to have to do it again here against Pelfrey. Get something started. Reyes goes after that high pitch and strikes out. That's the first strikeout for Mike Pelfrey. He has been locked in on breaking balls. I think the Twins picked up on that and said, Give me that high hard one. You can see Joe Maurer, the catcher, almost standing up, wanting that fastball about shoulder height. Pelfrey delivers. Bautista takes the breaking ball outside. Jose's average is 266, and I'm sure he is anxious to hear the results of the fan vote for the All Star team. That will come out. 6:30. There will be an All Star selection show. His biggest competition was Nick Marquez right. yesterday, and Baltimore was on the road. So that might have helped out a little bit, maybe. The Fans at home helped him out. And they drive to left field. Arcia has got room. Makes the catch on the warning track. Two outs. We want to remind you that we want to see who makes the All Star team. You can tune in tonight at 6 30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 3 30 p.m. Pacific Time. All four champs across the board. The All Star. Selection show. Maybe Edwin and Panasone will also be named that all-star team.
certainly worthy. He's had a great first half to his season. This will pop up into right. Easy inning for Mike Pelfrey. After a long first inning, it takes him just eight pitches to get through the third. By the 2013 Honda Civic, Canada's best-selling car 15 years in a row. Honda, the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in Toronto. Lots of fans out in the 200 outfield level. It's Junior Jays Saturday. A lot of kids in attendance. And after the ball game, the kids 14 and under will run the bases. Blue Jays won last night four to nothing. They got some work to do this afternoon. They trail three to nothing as we are set for the top of the fourth. Osvaldo Arcia. One and one count. Arcia is from Venezuela. He signed as a amateur free agent with the Twins in 2007 and spent six years in the minor leagues. He was just 17 when he signed with the Twins from Venezuela. Started at the lowest rung, the Dominican Summer League, back in 2008, and steadily climbed up. Got up to A ball and double A last year. He was an all star in the Florida State League. Part of a home run hitting contest that they have around the all star game in the Florida State League. So he's got some power. Pop this one up down the left side. Long run for Rajay Davis, and it's about three rows deep into the seats. Arcia. Played 25 games in AAA this year. Hit 284 with six homers and 17 RBIs. He strikes out. There's a good number right at the top of the zone. Second strikeout for Dickey this afternoon. Like you said, he likes to throw it up there, and as a hitter, you say, I got that one. I can hit it. And it's tough to lay off of it. Garcia did everything right, but hit the baseball. Well, Dickey has said when he can throw that knuckleball a little bit harder, even if it's up and it doesn't move, he got a chance to get away with it because he's got a little extra hop on it, a little more velocity. <laughs> Trevor Poof, today's the DH. Poof played third base in last night's game. 0 2. Twins are trying to snap a six game losing streak. 
Dickey is trying to make it three straight, excuse me, four straight wins. He's won his last three decisions. Not a bad idea right there. 84 with that fastball. He's been using the fastball a little bit more. Is Ron Gardenhire, the manager of the Minnesota Twins? A pop up into shallow right. Kawasaki, the second baseman, goes out, makes the catch. Chris Parmley, the right fielder. Parmley is a former number one pick. He was picked by the Twins in 2006 in the first round. Had a nice debut season in 2011. He had 355 in 88 plate appearances. Hit four homers and drove in 14, and everybody kind of lit up saying, okay, we might have something with Parmley's power. And then, like as is most of the cases with younger players, a little bit of a setback. Went back to AAA in 2012 at 3.38 and hit 17 home runs. To be a power hitter, I think in Minnesota, to hit for constant power, you have to have light tower power because it's a big ballpark. And Harmley has good power, decent power, but in that ballpark, I don't know if that's going to play. Would you change your offensive philosophy in that ballpark? I would. I, I think you still need guys who can hit the ball out of the ballpark, but you need more average hitters, better average hitters, and guys who get on base because it's it's a pitcher's ballpark. Harmley takes a two-out walk. That's the first walk issued by R.A. Dickey this afternoon. Aaron Hicks, center fielder, singled and scored in the third. He scored the first Twins run. We mentioned before he's a switch hitter batting right-handed against R.A. Dickey. He and Eduardo Escobar, both switch hitters, both hit right-handed their first time up. We saw Ben Zobras do that the last time Dickey faced him. He hit right handed the first two at bats and then decided that's not working. That's it. Switched work. around to the left side. I, know, I bet you he didn't get any hits those first two times up either. Dickey, a very good fielder, takes the comebacker, ends the inning. Two out walk doesn't hurt. The Blue Jays trail by three. When they bat in the fourth, it'll be Adam Lynn, then Colby Erasmus, and Rajay Davis. Middle of the order for the Jays.
presented by Boston Pizza. Saturday, July 20th will be the next Junior Jays Saturday. Blue Jays will take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Game time is 1.07 p.m. There are special kids' prize tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats after the game. Kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Call Blue Jays at 416-341-1234 for tickets. Log on to BlueJays.com. Stop by most Rogers Plus locations for the next Junior Jays Saturday, July 20. Adam Lind is ready in the box, and here's the pitch from Belfry. It's in there, of course. Right? Lind had the second of three consecutive two-out walks in the first. And the Blue Jays stranded the bases low. That's where they had him on the ropes right there, Mike Belfry. He has cut his pitch count down. In each of the first three innings, 32 to 16 to 8. Pelfrey was able to get out of that inning on a 4 1 ground out off the bat of Rajay Davis. The Blue Jays this season are batting 179 with the bases loaded. That's last in the major leagues. Is behind one and two. Driven down the left side, the well foul. Blue Jays trying to close in on 500 once again. They're 42 and 44 at the start of this game. Lynn strikes out another high fastball. And that record that you were just talking about, Buck, has been built on a pretty decent home record here at the Rogers Center over the last 26 games they've won 18 of them they pitch better they hit better and look at the home runs and run differential that'll do it every single time when you hit and pitch like that they right, should play better at home and the Jays had a disappointing start to their season but they've been good over their last 26 games Kobe Erasmus walked his first time up Side. It's three and oh, you know, it's interesting how Teams have to deal with injuries every year Mike Pelfrey's injury was just a guy who was running in the outfield In between starts he was in Cleveland the day before he was going to pitch He was running in the outfield and felt a back problem Luckily for the twins their triple-a team was in Louisville, which is about a five-hour drive from Cleveland they have one of their young players Rent a car, drive up to Cleveland, make the start the next day when Pelfrey went on the disabled list. Funny how guys get injured and you got to call up reinforcements. Rasmus hits it high and deep to center. Hicks back at the track, at the wall, jumps and makes the catch. Aaron Hicks had a little more room than he thought he had he jumped he was in front of the wall that makes a nice play on Kobe Erasmus for the second out of the inning depending on how the wind blows balls like this from Rasmus it will get knocked down when the wind when the wind is blowing and the, the roof is open Hicks gets back to that 400 side times his leap perfectly that one's going to stay in the yard but it also looked like that ball was knocked down when it left the bat, it looked like it had enough to leave the yard. Well, and you could see the way Hicks turned and ran. He thought it was going to be out of the ballpark, and I agree with you. I think that wind knocked it down and kept it in the yard. Rajay Davis. Oh, it back off the screen.
missed with the 0-2 pitch down and away. Mike Belfry has made a significant adjustment. He's retired seven straight since his stewards had a leadoff single in the second. Throwing harder than he did in the first inning. I think he's loose. Well, he never got into the flow of the game. First battery face reached on an air. And then he was working out of the stretch. He would pick off Reyes. Then get Bautista fly out. Then he ran into control problems. Walked three straight. Head and legged it out. Not much Escobar could do with Davis in his speed. With that kind of speed, that's why infielders can't play deep even with two strikes against Davis. He breaks his bat on that two seamer on the inside part of the plate. He checks out where the shortstop did as he makes his way up the first base line and knows he has a shot. And you can see that last move right there gets him to first base at the front part of the bag. Infield single just the second hit for the Blue Jays this afternoon. Miseris Sturis has the other hit. Davis is 21 for 23 in steals. He gets ahead of his stewards. But just in the fourth inning, I think if Davis senses he can get a big jump, he should run. Yeah, I don't care what the score is or the inning. It's almost automatic for Rajay Davis. Not running. The stewards takes one up and away. Because he's so quick. He turns towards second base and in about a step step and a half he is in full speed mode. Now I know why he hasn't run. Absolutely. <laughs> he has that protective mitt he puts on his left hand. He didn't have it for the first two pitches of this at bat. He slides head first and that is to protect his fingers. When he hits that bag. There he goes. He got his mitt. Mauer throws him out. Joe Mauer throws a strike to second to end the inning. We have played four. Twins have a three nothing lead. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
all weekend long. It's in support of the Food Banks Canada. If you're attending tomorrow's game, bring your non-perishable food items and cash donations to gates 3, 5, and 10. There are mystery bags that will be available for a donation of $25 or more. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. You can always log on to BluesJays.com to order your Jays tickets or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. The Lady Jays food drive will take place and wrap up tomorrow. And look out. There are some Buck Martinez and Pat Taylor autographed baseball hats in those Woo. things. <laughs> in the mystery bag. So make sure you get yourself a mystery bag. All right, Dickey. It's a comebacker off the bat of Eduardo Escobar. Let's see. First out of the top of the fifth. I know for a fact there are some Jack Morris baseball caps autographed in those bags as well. So what more could you ask for for $25? You, you, know you know what that's going to be like? It's going to be like when you were a kid and you got your baseball cards. Yep. And you wanted that Willie Mays. And you got that Pat Corrales. <laughs> 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 Nothing against my ex-manager or yeah. anything. He's the first name that came to my mind. And that is something. You're, You're looking for those cards up and saying, I know I'm going to get Ted Williams, Tony Lee, and Willie Mays, and Larry Henry. Choo Choo Coleman. <laughs> <laughs> As a fly ball into center where the wind is pushing that ball out. That ball carried a long way. Interesting how Rasmus it appeared the ball he hit was knocked down by the wind and that ball kept getting pushed away. Dozier's retired on the fly ball to center. Jamie Carroll, the veteran, got the call to start at third base this afternoon. He's delivered an RBI double and scored a run. Vincent Carroll made his debut in 2002 with the Montreal Expos. That's no surprise. What is surprising is he was 28 years old when he made his debut. Shocking. He was patient. He was always very sound fundamental. He was a 14th round pick of the Expos in 1996 out of the University of Evansville. Played 136 games with the Rockies in 2006, and he hit 300. He did a nice job for the Dodgers here in 2010 and 2011. Players like Jamie Cam Carroll can play a long time. They're good teammates, and they can help your team win ball games. Ari Dickey racks up his third strikeout as the Twins go in order. Blue Jays will bat in the bottom of the fifth. Are the Halliburton Boy Scouts welcome to Rogers Center? We hope you're having a good day at the ballpark. 
And across the way in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are folks from the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa. Welcome to the Rogers Center. It is a beautiful day. Another good crowd on hand for Junior Jays Saturday. And that's a big rally cap right there. And the Blue Jays might need that before it's all said and done. Yeah. You gotta figure out a way to get on base now, bring them around, shutting out. Getting shut out by Mike Pelfrey. Meister Asturias was at the plate when Rajay Davis was caught stealing to end the fourth. Ball on the strike. Well, the Mets have always had a lot of top prospects, and you've heard about them a lot. Naturally, it's because they're in New York. That has a lot to do with it. But you think about Pelfrey, we heard about him for a long mm -hmm. time and how he was going to be a dominant pitcher. Yeah. And he may well be. But you go back to Isringhausen, Pulsifer, and Paul Wilson. The top three. I mean, that was like. Jabba Chamberlain, Phil Hughes, and Ian Kennedy. I yeah. Mean, New York has a tendency to overhype their prospects. Some yeah. of them are legit, some of them aren't. Asturias has a second hit. And he just reached out and poked that past Eduardo Escobar into center field. So well, pretty swing. It's a good pitch by Mike Pelfrey, but the guy, Meister Asturias, is just hot. You see, he splits his fingers a little bit. It goes down and away, and he just throws the barrel of the bat at the ball. Now, when you make a pitch like that, you think you're going to get yourself an out. Pelfrey sees it in the center field and goes, you got to be kidding me. How'd you do that? Well, it's a good start. It was a good pitch. Josh Tolley. Totally hit a fly ball into center in the second inning, and Meiser Asturias went all the way around the bag at second. Hicks caught the ball and turned it into an 8 4 3 double play. Totally's timing is just a fraction off. He's been late on a lot of those pitches and found them back over the Blue Jays. Now that has something to do with him just catching. One pitcher. He just catches R.A. Dickey. J.P. had to miss a couple of games because of that bruised shoulder, so he got a few extra games. Tough to, to do that, get that timing down when you play just once a week. But I think this will be a bat right here for the Blue Jays in this game. You got a leadoff single by Asturias. It's the fifth inning. Josh has got to find his way on the base somehow right here. Anyway, then you've got options with Kawasaki. You can ask him to bunt. There's the ball way outside. That's why the Blue Jays got things going in the game last night in the fourth inning. This tourist walk there and CV walked. Kawasaki sacrificed and then top of the order took care of business. Couple of hits from the Jose's, and next thing you knew, the Blue Jays had three runs. So Josh Tolley's got to dig deep now in the hole one and two. There are little games within the game, and this is certainly one of them right here. Bottom of the fifth inning. You've got to win this match, win this head to head battle. Two and two. I think one thing for Tolley, who has caught Pelfrey in the past, is that he knows his release point. Obviously, having had to concentrate on it while he's catching Pelfrey, 
So that's an advantage. I don't think you can get too caught up in trying to figure out patterns. He knows I know and I know he knows so who's going to be right from the left side. You know you would think that he'd be able to pick that release point up. Works him for a full count. They ran his tourists last time in this situation and that resulted in the double play. Well Pelfrey trying to retire his former catcher. Nobody out. He's one of the better ground ball type of pitchers. Mike Pelfrey. Third among National League pitchers with a ground ball percentage over the last four years. Only Tim Hudson, Paul Mahalam were better. So that's why they sent that runner in this situation last time. Stay out of the double play. It's only a three run lead for Minnesota Blue Jays, certainly can erase that in a heartbeat. But they got to put more pressure on Pelfrey. If Stewart's not running, Belfry pops it up. Tolly popped it up to Jamie Carroll, and Belfry gets the big up. So, first out of the inning, and he avoids allowing the first two to reach here in the fifth. So, that was a big at bat, and they can't come up with it. Now, Kawasaki's got to get off. I mean, if Tolly got on, it wasn't imperative. That Kawasaki got on. I think it's imperative now that he gets on. Really turn that lineup over with a couple of runners on. Well, because both Reyes and Bautista are swinging the bat so well, yeah. you'd love to have them bat with a couple on here. Ground ball. This should be two. Dozier, Escobar, back to first. It is a double play. A promising inning up in smoke. Belfry rebounds. We'll go to the sixth. Here comes the home hardware cleanup group. Brought to you by Natura, home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. Content you'll find on our radio, Primetime Sports, with Bob McCowan every weekday on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. Bob McCowan will bring you up to date on all the sports. And we'll do it with a little bit of a flair. Every weekday, 4 to 7 on the Fan 590. Beautiful Saturday afternoon in Toronto. Only thing bad about it is Blue Jays trail 3 0. Boy, they let Mike Pelfrey off the Hook in the first, and they haven't been able to rally back against him since. All three runs left on. That's the only three runs that they have left on. Belfry pitched out of that bases loaded jam.
Kamara fights it off. Really interesting numbers for Ari Dickey. He's given up three runs in the third inning. It's the only inning where he didn't throw first pitch strikes. He fell behind and that cost him. Every other inning, he's been perfect. First pitch strikes to every batter. Oh, the importance of that first pitch strike. Reyes throws out Mauer. One down. Justin Mono will bat. He is 0 for 2 so far, and he's been one of the premier hitters in baseball. And you look at his start of his career. And then since that concussion, things haven't been quite the same. Yeah, a lot of people talk about the concussion having a problem with that career on base plus slugging average. Outstanding at almost 870 his first eight years. And then it has dipped down. For me, though, I think it has more to do with where he's playing now at Target Field. It's, it's not a hitter's ballpark, not like the Metrodome was. And I think that might have something to do with it also. That's a good point because he had the type of power where he, he hit the ball out any part of the Metrodome. He didn't have to focus on pulling the ball. Target Field is a much bigger ballpark and certainly much more challenging, especially to the power outs. For a left handed hitter in the Metrodome, you wanted to be a lefty. You wanted to. Grow up a twin fan and then go play there because that was a joke. To hit try that and hit baggie it up there and right yeah. covering those retractable seats. One and two, one out. That's a foul ball sliced outside of first. Well, you see, Morneau's career at Metrodome really was pretty good. You look at the average, well, he hit for a better average, but look at the plate appearances per home run at the Metrodome. 22.8 and almost double that at target field. There's a fly ball to right. Bautista has plenty of room. Mono's retired two outs. Yeah, think about that. One home run every 22 at bats in the Metrodome. One home run almost every 46 at bats at target field. And I think that plays. And what happens to hitters when they see a big ballpark? What do they try to do? Try to hit it hard. And yeah, that's not going to happen. It's not going to work. Especially for a guy like Bono. He was the MVP in 2006. He had 321 with 34 homers and drove in 130. And you don't see those numbers. You try to generate them with your bat. Wow, that hit RC right on the back of the right hand. He's going to wave off the trainer and. Did they call it a foul ball? No, yeah, he's he got hit. You can hear the flush as he got hit in the hand, and he takes for his pace, but he picked up his bat as if he wanted to hit. <laughs> Knuckleball, watch this one just tracks inner half. Right on the hand. That's 78 mile an hour knuckleball. Moves him back. John Gibbons has come out to ask Brian Knight whether or not that might have hit the knob of the bat. And of course, Knight, all he can go by is what he hears. And it sounded as though it was a fleshy sound when yeah. that ball hit Arcia. So Arcia is at first base, hit with two outs. Trevor Plouffe. The Twins have lost six straight. They lost the final game of the Royals series, were swept four straight by the Yankees, and lost the opener here last night. The start of a long, tough road trip for the Minnesota Twins. Toronto, Tampa Bay, New York. That's pretty tough. Yeah, it doesn't get any tougher than that. <laughs> and the the turf that they have to play on. You have to deal with that also when you play back to back series on that artificial surface and you're not used to it. 
Yeah, it can really be a problem. Of course, Minnesota used to have artificial surface in their ballpark. Bluth got a pitch three and zero oh and pulled it foul. There goes Arcia. It's a strike and Tolly couldn't find a handle. Arcia gets a stolen base, his first major league stolen base. In three attempts. Try to stir something up. It's a fastball right at the bottom of the strike zone. And with that big glove, and there he's got that big catcher's glove because of the knuckleball. He just can't find the handle. Lined right to third as he stirs. Great tires, poof. Twins who strand a runner in second. Top of the order when we come back. Blue Jays got to get something figured out against Pelfrey. are presented by Book the Party Friday, July 19th. Blue Jays take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Game time is 7.07 p.m. Come on down to Rogers Center early and check out the pre-game festivities happening outside Gate 10. You can win great prizes, enjoy the live music, and a licensed stereo. Gates open at 4.30 p.m. So call the Blue Jays to pick up your tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com and stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Summer Fan Friday Festivals. Say Reyes, the leadoff man, takes the first pitch strike. Bowed straight back. It has gotten late early here at Rogers Center. Where have I? Heard that before. It's late. Sixth inning. Blue Jays can't solve anything until they get some base runners on against Mike Pelfrey. Yeah, don't you get the feeling that it's they're just one big hit away from just busting this open and getting the train started? There's a ground ball. Dozier 360 throws out Reyes. Dozier's played a nice second base in this series. Told you that he only committed two errors at second base, and he did a good job of timing that up. That was a set play by him. As soon as the ball was hit, he knew that he wasn't going to be able to get much on the throw if he fielded that ball squarely. So he played it off to the side and 360 and threw a strike. It's a good play. Dozier's a natural shortstop. He played there last year for the Twins. He's made a nice transition moving to second. Jose Bautista goes after the first pitch and skies it to left. The left fielder Arcia calls for it and Escobar gets out of his way. Bautista's retired on one pitch.
Jack Morris, a little animated in a sports that 590 radio booth working with Jerry Howarth. He, of course, formerly a Minnesota twin, did some broadcasting for the twins as well, along with his buddy Dan Gladden. Gladden still doing the radio for the twins. Of course, Morris threw one of the most historic World Series games. 1991 game seven against Atlanta. A 10 inning effort for the Twins. That shot we had of him doesn't it look like he just wants to jump out of the booth down there and get down <laughs> on the field and try and fire up the troops. Look at him. He's ready. I'm not taking this sitting down. <laughs> ready to go to battle. Two balls and a strike to Edwin in Carnassio. Bottom of the sixth, Twins lead at three nothing. Blue Jays have but three hits. <laughs> Belfry is hand in the middle of big guys very easily. Miser is Sturis is two for two. He's got two of the three hits. Rajay Davis has the other, an infield single. So haven't been able to square him up yet. Last pitch. It looked like Encarnacion shook to a fastball. Pelfrey did. It looked like Encarnacion was looking for something off speed variety and he slipped the fastball right by him. Could you ever pick up what a pitcher might be doing by the way he shakes off pitches? You could if, if you're familiar with the guy, but the Blue Jays have a face Pelfrey. It's another 2 2 pitch inside. Oftentimes a pitcher will nod in agreement with the sign and then nod again. Indicating location so for a hitter that means fastball. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see a double nod. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Chances are it's going to be a heater. Bouncing ball in Connection hits it to short Escobar in plenty of time. The Blue Jays go quietly in their half of the sixth. Mike Pelfrey is shutting out the Blue Jays on just three hits. Season on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com slash sports to get started. We want to send our best wishes for a happy birthday to our VIP security friend Diane, who's been working with the Blue Jays for five years today. She was even the one that told me she's 49 years old today. So Diane, happy birthday. We send our best to hope you're having a great birthday. Always a pleasure to step off the elevator down there on the first floor and see Diane smiling every single day. So happy birthday, Diane. Staff does a great job here at Rogers Center. They're all enthusiastic and they do a great job of greeting the fans as they come into Rogers Center. 
bottom and third of the Twins lineup here in the seventh. Chris Parmley, the right field there, goes after the first pitch. He's doubled and walked so far. Strike two. Balls and two strikes the leadoff man here in the seventh. R.A. Dickey has not pitched poorly. It's allowed just three runs on five hits. The Blue Jays haven't been able to solve Mike Pelfrey at all. There's a drive toward the gap. Davis turns and runs. This ball's going to get down and bounce out of the ballpark for a ground rule double. Harmony hits the double to start the inning. Under his second base, nobody out. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Thank you, Jamie. Chris Tillman and Andy Pettit, the starting pitchers in that ball game, and the Yankees had a walk-off win. Courtesy of Vernon Wells last night. Wells had a single through left side of the infield. Off of Jim Johnson. His sixth blown save. Johnson also picked up the loss. He is two and seven. Well, I tell you what, from year to year, you just don't know what to predict with relievers. Fernando Rodney and Johnson both were nearly perfect last year. Not that way this year. Aaron Hicks, the center fielder, Hicks is one for two on the afternoon. In that Orioles game, Manny Machado hit his 39th double of the season. That's the second most doubles before the All Star game in the history of baseball. Edgar Martinez of the Seattle Mariners hit 42 doubles before the All Star break in 1996. Machado's got a legitimate shot of shattering that. So totally did a good job of staying with that one. He almost looked like he was ready to take off, run back to the backstop to track it down. It was that knuckleball that goes away from the right-handers. I think he gets on the side of that one, down and away. Good job, I told you to backhand that one. Big run out there for both teams. Blue Jays trying to keep it from scoring. Twins trying to figure out how to get it around. Hicks takes the walk. There'll be a lot more baseball coming up tonight later on. Atlanta will be in Philadelphia to take on the Phillies. It'll be tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. It's at 7. Pacific West Ontario and East. It's across the board. Tim Hudson goes to the mound for the Braves. Will be opposed by Kyle Kendrick for the Phillies. R.A. Dickey is an exceptional fielder, and the Blue Jays are anticipating a bunch here from the number nine here, Eduardo Escobar. He squares and butts it back to Dickey. They got a shot at third. They get the lead runner. Dickey got off the mound in great shape. Escobar didn't get it away from the pitcher, and Dickey made a good play. Bunted it just a little bit too hard. Watch Dickey bounce off the mound. He's got the whole third base side. As soon as he delivers the ball on that bunt play, it's the number one bunt play third baseman reads that Dickey can get over there. And you have to know what kind of fielding pitcher you have when you go to make yourself a first baseman. Get that lead runner. 
Well, his stories read it perfectly as well. As soon as he saw Dickey was going to get to it, he got back to third. Escobar can't get down the sacrifice punt. Lead out man Brian Dozier. Single in the first, had an RBI ground out in the third. And flied out in the fifth. Now a little bit more speed at second base in hit, so you got to keep him a little bit closer to the bag. Davis looking up. Ryan Dozier has just hit a three run home run, his eighth of the season. He's had a four RBI day. Got some power at the top of that lineup there. Home run number eight for Dozier. A deep fly ball last time to center field, run down by Rasmus. This is a fastball inner half, and he turns on it. Watch it one more time. Fastball, and R.A. Dickey doesn't even want to look at it. He knows it's gone. Jamie Carroll bounces to third. He's retired. Dozier, he's had a good series. He had a single and a double in last night's game. Has a double, an RBI ground out, and now a three-run home run. It's a 19th home run that Dickey has given up this season. The Twins now lead it six nothing. He's a good looking player. Dozier. I like him at second base. Good fielder. He's got some speed. And then he just showed a little pop. Bauer lifts a little fly ball into left. The inning is over, but the Minnesota Twins on the strength of Brian Dozier's three run home run have given Mike Belfry a six nothing lead. Honda's CRV and IIHS top safety fit. Honda's the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. This happened last inning. Two big runs out there for the Minnesota Twins on the bases, and Brian Dozier unloads into the left field seats for his eighth home run. Three big runs for the Twins. They doubled the score from three to six. 
today's drive of the game. We move to the bottom of the seventh. Brian Dozier with a big series so far. He's had a four RBI game. Caleb Theobar makes his 17th appearance. He's up to a great start with the Twins. Yeah, how about this in 16 games? A 125 average against righties. Lefties 0.40. He's got a very good breaking ball. Hasn't allowed a hit since June the 9th at, at Washington. So he's been on a nice little roll himself. Clay Thomas takes over defensively in left field for Osvaldo Arcia. Adam Lynn goes after the first pitch. It's the fly ball to center. And Aaron Hicks gets over and makes the catch. One pitch, one out, bottom of the seventh. Theobar is 26 years old. We're having a chat with Jamie Carroll. Kobe Erasmus is 0 for 1 with a walk. Theobar was originally drafted by Milwaukee in the eighth round of the 2009 free agent draft. A little bit older in that he was a college player, came out of South Dakota State University. Milwaukee actually released him in December of 2010 and Minnesota picked him up. You never know where you're going to find players. Well, they, especially left handers, huh? Lefties, yeah, they can develop late. He's 26 years old. And we were just talking about it a couple of innings ago about your, your bullpen guys. You never know when they're going to have big years. And this is a good bullpen, the Minnesota Twins. Yeah, we've been talking about the Blue Jays bullpen. The Twins bullpen has been pretty good too this year. Twins bullpen is third in ERA, 315. Blue Jays are first. They're fourth in hits per nine innings. They've only allowed 7.72. They don't give up many home runs. They've got a deep bullpen as well. Those are strength. Two balls, two strikes to Colby Erasmus. Blue Jays. With one out in the seventh, trail six to nothing. Credit Mike Belfry for really digging in his heels. He was in all kinds of trouble in the first inning, but he was able to strand the bases loaded. There are the numbers that we were just talking about. Toronto now has taken over. The American League and bullpen ERA just had a Kansas City. And there's the Twins, 315, and I think it's the, the balance both of those teams have. Rasmus hits it to the right. This Parmalee makes the catch. Two outs. You know the Blue Jays have four lefties and four righties. Minnesota, they also are carrying eight relievers, three lefties. So Ron Gardenhire and John Gibbons. Can pick their spots with their lefties and get the matchups that he wants. And boy, when they both start to get good results from their starters, that's when the bullpen really can shine because they'll get proper rest and you can spread out the workload. Rajay Davis goes after the first pitch. Joe Maurer takes his mask off. Boy, Theobar comes in and he's just eight pitches to retire the side in the order. But go to the eighth, the Twins with a 6 nothing lead.
three run innings really led to his undoing. Six earned runs on seven hits and a big blow, a three run home run off the bat of Brian Dozier. Both of those innings started by Parmley doubling, ended up three runs. Dozier, that was a, a killer right there, a tough one. Homering making a three run game, a six run game. Now Darren Oliver into the game. Three and one record for Ollie. Last worked in the Detroit series. Just an inning, had a couple of strikeouts against the Tigers. Testimono quickly behind 0 and 2. Morno's gone 0 for 3 so far this afternoon. He's just 1 for 11 against, excuse me, he's 1 for 9, a 111 batting average against Donovan. Tried to check, he did, according to Mark Carlson down at third base. Well, the Twins have made the most of their seven hits. He scored six runs on seven hits. Of course, three run home runs will do that. Ari Dickey gives up six or more runs for the seventh time this year. He's had problems avoiding the Big innings. Clutched up with a couple of big hits. It's a fly ball into center. Rasmus ranging over into the power alley makes the catch. One up. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. A crowd on hand at Rogers Center this afternoon. 37,034. Another great crowd for a Junior Jays Saturday. Cleet Thomas is batting for the first time. He entered the game as a defensive replacement in the last half inning. Osvaldo Arcia was hit by a pitch in the sixth. We haven't heard any update about his health, but that may be the reason he's out of the game. Knuckleball hit him right on top of that hand, the one that holding the bat. It looked like he was in pain, so. Thomas, who started the year in the minor leagues, gets a, a shot against Darren Oliver. Creek Thomas is 29 years old. Originally signed by the Detroit Tigers. Played his college baseball at Auburn University. And he will get a breaking ball from Darren Oliver. Gonna have to stay on it. it. Looks like he's a throwback also. A little Evan Gaddis in him. No batting gloves. Right three. The inside corner. Oliver paints the inside corner. He strikes out the first man he faces in the eighth. July 19th, they're still retired and extremely dangerous. Tell me that's a stick of dynamite in your pocket. It's an emergency. Red 2, July 19th. Oliver got more no to fly out the center. Now he strikes out Cleet Thomas. Trevor Proof, the DH this afternoon, goes after the first pitch. Big bouncing ball for his stirrups. Oliver shuts down the side in order. Go to the bottom of the eighth. It's all twins. They have a six nothing lead. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Black Bay Broadcast Studio.
brought to you by Bacardi Oakart Smooth Spiced Rum. Bacardi is a proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. Aaron Hicks in center field for the Minnesota Twins has played 60 games in center field. He has eight outfield assists, no errors, and with plays like this, you can see why they are very high on this young man out there in center field. Takes away extra bases from Colby Rasmus. Hicks with the smooth move this afternoon. Well, they knew they had a special player in Hicks, so much so that they traded two center fielders away from their big league club, Ben Revere and Denard Spann. Blue Jay fan trying to rally the troops from high above Rogers Center. And they got the right man at the plate to start things off. They face Jared Burton. Meister Asturias is two for two. Burton working in his 39th game of the season. He's got a power arm with that right arm. Fastball 95, hard slider. He's got that low three-quarter delivery. It's hard for batters to pick up, and he hasn't clicked for him yet. But he needs to use that fastball because it's a good one. Gets ahead of his Sturis. We mentioned his Sturis has a pair of singles, two for two today. His average at 240. Make it three for three. Boy, they stay away, and he just stays with it, drives it the opposite way. Good plate coverage. Ability to hit the ball away from you. Just a nice little soft serve. We used to call these. Just serves it out to left field and finds the hole. No overstriding. Just use your hands. Just punch it the other way. Josh Tolley has got over to you. Mike Pelfrey went six innings, allowed three hits, walked three, and struck out two. He sorted things out after a rocky first inning. But the Blue Jays couldn't take advantage of three two out walks. Tolly lines went into center. Hicks makes a terrific play. Boy, he read that perfectly, and that is always the toughest play for a center fielder that sinking line drive in front of you. Boy, he got a good break. It, it's tough because you got to make a decision right now. Do I go and lay out, try and make the catch, or do I play it safe, lay back? He's up by six runs. He could gamble, and he comes up a winner. That's a great point. Obviously, when you've got the cushion like that, you can gamble, and he did. He makes a terrific play. Taking a hit away from Josh Tolan. Kawasaki. He's over two. Same pitch. One's a ball, one's a strike. Go figure. Now he's got a battle. He's in the hole. 0 with 2. Gotta turn that lineup over right here if the Blue Jays have any thoughts of getting back into this. Bouncing ball up the first baseline. That'll go foul. Jared Burton, a second reliever to enter the ball game. Caleb Dearborn had another good inning. He tied the side in order in the seventh. Burton's 32 years old. He was originally signed by the Oakland Athletics. And from Oakland to Cincinnati's Rule 5 player. Spent five years with the Reds. And had some seasons where he closed. Because he's got that big arm. Twins do a good job of finding players in other organizations and then getting them at a discounted 
number. Oh, and two. Upstairs and away. Twins have always been at the forefront of signing and developing great players. For many years, they had a steady stream of players coming to the big leagues. But last couple of years, it's been a little bit of a tough go. They haven't been able to produce those impact players out of their minds. I guess you could say the last two impact players they have brought to the big leagues, Power and Morno. That's been what, eight, seven, eight years? Yeah. They have a couple of kids in their lower minor leagues that are all over the, the radar of highly touted prospects. A kid who was just drafted last year named Buxton, who's going to be a good player. Samuel, a third baseman, I believe he's in double A this year. Karasaki, as he always does, putting up a fight. Arcia looks like he's a keeper, and the center fielder looks like he's a keeper, too. Yeah. I just wonder if they're going to be impact bats. Certainly, Hicks looks like he's going to be a pretty good all around player. They have been blessed with some great center fielders. Jack Jones, Kirby Puckett. The guy who just left here with the Tigers, Torrey Hunter. And Bernard Spann followed in his shoes, and Ben Revere. And they've always been able to develop talent. Two balls and two strikes. Bottom of the eighth inning. There's a fly ball in the center. Hicks coming in. Kawasaki's retired. Two down. Just a reminder, fans, big day in baseball later on this afternoon. The Major League All-Star Game Selection Show will be right here on Sportsnet, all four channels. It starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Find out who the starters are and who the reserves will be and who's going to make the pitching staff and keep your fingers crossed for a couple of Blue Jays. Edwin Encarnacion, Jose Bautista, and possibly even Brett Cesa, maybe Steve Delamar. The voting will be announced, and obviously the American League gets nine starters, including the DH. Fans will vote for those starters. The National League, National League fans will vote for eight National League starters. Reyes pops it up. Dozier waits at second, and the Blue Jays go quietly in the eighth. We'll go to the ninth. It's all twins.
J.P. Aaron C.B. Bobblehead will be given away Sunday tomorrow as the Blue Jays and Twins wrap up this three-game series. The game time is 1.07 p.m. First 20,000 fans in the Rogers Center will receive a J.P. Aaron C.B. Bobblehead doll. Call the Blue Jays for tickets at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com and stop by most Rogers Plus locations. It's J.P. Aaron Sebia Bobblehead Day tomorrow at Rogers Center. New pitcher for the Blue Jays. Here's the left-hander, Juan Perez. Perez in relief from Darren Oliver, who had a perfect eighth inning. How about Juan Perez? Being called up at the end of May. Hasn't given up a run yet. 17 and two-thirds innings. That's the third longest streak to start a career as a Blue Jay. Tough on the lefties, tough on the righties. He can sink his fastball, throws a lot of breaking balls. Chance to get some work here. This is 11th game. This is badly upstairs to Chris Parmley, the right fielder. Parmley's got a pair of doubles this afternoon. He's also walked had a perfect day at the plate. There's a fly ball into left. Easy play for Davis. One out. So now we're going to take a look at my partner's National League All Stars. He picked the American League yesterday, so here's a look at Tabby's All Stars. These are the guys I think who should make it. Carlos Gonzalez has been outstanding. So has Gomez and Dominic Brown. You can't discount him. 22 home runs, 60 RBIs. On the left side, David Wright, Troy Tulowiski, they've been the best. Brandon Phillips, I have him at second base, picked him over Matt Carpenter, and Paul Goldschmidt over Joey Votto fan. Sorry about that. Molina is the catcher. That's easy pick right there. And Matt Harvey, of course, the game is in New York at City Field. The Mets starter has got to be able to start that all-star game. Pretty interesting selections. Of course, Joey Votto hitting well over 300. He didn't have the RBIs that Goldschmidt has. I'll give you that. <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> Nowhere. No, I, I think you did a great job. Yadimir, Yadimir, Yadier Molina is by far the best catcher in baseball. Yep, and he's having a great year. But Buster Posey's numbers are right yeah. there too. He's, he's a tough guy to to pick over. But Yadi's been better. I think Matt Harvey's a good choice, and he'll probably start the All Star game, and deservedly so. He's first in the National League in strikeouts. A couple guys I, I left off of there in the outfield that deserves and will probably be there. Carlos Beltran, he's had a great first half. Andrew McCutcheon has had a big first half for the Pirates, and they're in first place, best record. And Jay Bruce from the Reds has had a good first half also. But I could only pick three. Aaron Hicks is called out on strikes. Boy, Perez continues to dazzle. He has been impressive. Look like another breaking ball. Look at that. Way outside, and he bends it right over the outside corner. With two outs here in the inning. Juan Perez has passed Tom Hinkey for the most consecutive innings without an earned run to start a Toronto career. He moves to 18 and a third, one third more than Hinkey. The next on the list is Victor Cruz, who started his Blue Jays career with 21 and a third innings without allowing an earned run. Get some rest. That last fastball was 95 miles an hour. With movement, too. You see how he turned that thing over? Make it tough for those right handers. Tough to pick the ball up from this guy anyway. Then when you throw a 95 with movement, you can see why he's put up those good numbers. Don't you think contending ball clubs are going to be knocking on the Blue Jays' door for one or two of these lefties? It's almost an embarrassment of riches, is it? They have four lefty relievers like the Blue Jays have, and they're all good. They're reliable. 
you know what you're going to get. They might get hit from time to time, but they're not going to walk themselves into jams. They're not going to give up a lot of home runs, and they're going to have the ability to strike out hitters in tough situations. Aaron Loop, Brett Cecil, Darren Oliver, and Juan Perez. Quite a left side of the bullpen for the Blue Jays. And he does it again. Perez has another clean inning. He sets down the Twins in order. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Blue Jays trail by six. Sunday, July 21st, when the Blue Jays take on the Tampa Bay Rays. Game time is 1.07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Carlos Delgado commemorative baseball. Arrive early and enjoy the pregame ceremony as Carlos Delgado becomes the newest member of the Blue Jays' level of excellence. It's Sunday, July 21st. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234 to order your Jays tickets. Log on to BlueJays.com. You can always order your tickets online or stop by both Rogers plus locations. Carlos Delgado. New pitcher for Minnesota is their closer. Glenn Perkins, obviously not a safe situation, but he needs some work. Yeah, he needs some work. It's been a while since he has been in a ball game and you mentioned it that the twins have been losing six in a row that they have lost and Ron Gardenhair doesn't care that this is a non safe situation. He wants this W. Bautista starts things off and drives one into center. Hicks back at the track at the wall turns and makes another fine defensive catch. One down. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected, here's Aaron Hawksworth. So a lot's coming up right after this ball game on Connected. Aaron Hicks, boy, that's a veteran move. He turned his back to the infield, got turned around, and still had the presence to turn around and make the catch easily before he got to the wall. Three really nice catches this afternoon for the center fielder Rob Rasmus. He robbed totally last inning that time takes away a hit from Jose. Edwin Encarnacion has got over two with a walk. Bouncing ball to short. Escobar. Or no, two down. Blue Jays down to their final out. It's been about pitching this afternoon for the Minnesota Twins. They just haven't been able to 
muster anything. They had a shot in the first inning, but left the bases loaded, and then they've had four hits since then, and that's it. Four singles, one of them an infield hit. Is Sturz has the other three. Rajay Davis had the infield single top of the order has been shut down totally. Two outs. Then takes his strike. Perkins, boy, has he found a home in the back end of their bullpen. He's a former number one pick that was drafted out of the University of Minnesota as a starter. And that didn't work out. But he is seventh in the American League with 20 saves. Command of three pitches. He does it with a command of his fastball, his curveball, and his changeup. He's got very good control. The Blue Jays have won seven straight season series against the Twins going all the way back to 2006. This will even this series up for the game of peace. Rubber game tomorrow afternoon. Todd Redman will get the nod for the Blue Jays. He'll go up against Canadian Scott Diamond from Guelph, Ontario. Diamond is five and seven. Redmond is going one. Diamond, you can bet, will have a lot of family and friends in attendance for his start here at Rogers Center. There's Todd Redmond to get his first start for the Blue Jays. Lynn strikes out and that'll do it. Minnesota wins it six nothing. Blue Jays are shut out on just four hits. Mike Pelfrey picks up the win. Good day defensively for Aaron Hicks, the center fielder. We'll be back tomorrow afternoon. Two teams have split the first two ball games. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for watching.